Hello and welcome. You are watching Head to Head. I'm Jason Jones with UATV. Today we're talking about the attitudes of Ukrainians towards energy efficiency. A recent survey conducted by the Kiev International Institute of Sociology shows that almost every fifth Ukrainian is ready to invest money into the energy efficiency of their homes. But the level of awareness about this is still not high enough. To talk more about this, we welcome to our studio today Maria uh, Kovalhanchar, uh, projector, uh, project coordinator, and representative of the Friedrich uh, Ebert Foundation in Ukraine that ordered the aforementioned survey. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me it's here. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It was, I hope it wasn't too hard coming in today mm -hmm. so, in the weather. So, But I uh, just wanted to ask you a few questions regarding the survey that was done. Uh, for instance, uh, first of all, uh, so the survey shows that there are a number of Ukrainians who reside in a multi-apartment, uh, multi-apartment buildings and are ready to actually unite and take joint loans to implement energy efficiency uh, measures that, that and it increased, that number increased from 19 percent uh, to 19 percent from 15 percent in 2015. What do you think were the factors that played a role in encouraging this increase in support? I think that uh, one of the main factors that contributed to this is, of course, somewhat improvement of the financial situation in the families, mm -hmm. though it's not very much feasible now, but still there is. Mm -hmm. And the second uh, is uh, that starting from 2015, we have now in Ukraine lots of state programs which support such energy efficient projects. Mm -hmm. which, which, what do I mean by saying state programs? Mm -hmm. These are the programs that uh, um, allow Ukrainian uh, Ukrainians through the bank loans mm -hmm. to invest money into energy efficiency but hmm. then they will be reimbursed up to a certain amount of this money starting okay. from 35 percent to 70 okay. percent depending on the um, depending on the amount of the uh, people who get subsidies in in their households okay. So this program really uh, allows people to invest the money, but they pay only 50% of the sum, or maybe 60% or 70%. Okay. So this program of support really helped, I think. Uh -huh. And the second factor which contributed to this is also a, a raising awareness because of, of, all, of all the idea, I mean, of, uh, of the need to invest into energy efficiency projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, there has been lots of uh, social advertising in the media. Some TV channels really made some progress about that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, public awareness raising also plays the roles here. Okay, okay. And this brings to mind, um, so I know there is a lot of development going on as well. Uh, is there um, incentive, um, are there incentives being incur uh, given to uh, developers for new, the new housing projects to make, you know, build their buildings with energy efficient, um, you know, homes as far as like, you know, windows and things like that? Yeah, you know, if you look, uh, I'm not an expert on the in the building industry, but I think that if you look at those buildings which are now being built, mm -hmm. of course they are being built according to different standards. Uh -huh. You would hardly see a new building somewhere in Kiev, in Odessa, or in um, Lviv, for instance, which is built and where the energy efficiency class is E or F. Uh -huh. These are like six energy efficiency classes a b c d f a okay. is the best f is the worst uh, okay. and those which are built now they are b c level mm. because of the modern technologies used those buildings which you have which we have in ukraine now building stock they were built like in 50s and 60s of some course, of them yeah. in the beginning of the 20th century yeah. and their class energy efficiency class is like very low it's like ef which it means that they are very energy intensive and energy losses are huge mm. that's why ukraine is such an energy intensive country mm. that is why, yeah, now the buildings which are being built now, they are way better. Okay. And in, in, in this, uh, this group of, uh, you know, people who are, you know, I guess, buying more into energy efficiency, would you say it's uh, of the younger generation or the older generation? I think it's a younger generation or mm -hmm. it's a middle class mm -hmm. because, you know, the prices for, for, for the immobilities in Ukraine are pretty high, I mean, in comparison to the income level. So I think the, these are more younger, active population and middle class, mm -hmm. which uh, predominantly resides in bigger cities. Okay. All right. And so uh, going on to an, another question, uh, fewer people think today that uh, the population consumes just, uh, consumes just as insignificant uh, part of 
uh, the consummation of energy uh, is uh, as insignificant part of the energy resources. 73% compares 79% uh, compared to the 79% in 2015. So, however, a, a significant part of about 86% still believe that energy savings should be um, introduced primarily uh, with in, 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 in enterprises, you know, mm. businesses. So what do you believe can be done to curb these attitudes? Um, I see uh, no other way but really uh, to explain it to people. You know, the Soviet heritage, heritage that we had really like make people think that they are not responsible for their houses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that they are mm. responsible only for okay. their square meters where they reside. But th there is no com common responsibility for gotcha. the whole building. But mm -hmm. there is. Mm -hmm. There is. And this all brings all this all this bunch of factors. Uh, people in the, in the Soviet times uh, used not to analyze how much they consume because the energy was cheap. Mm -hmm. Now when they have to pay for this more, they really start counting. Gotcha. And the process really has already started. People started realizing that they do that they do consume a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the numerous reasons, our government had to increase the prices for, for utilities. Mm -hmm. And of course, they have to also, apart, with, uh, apart from this increase, they also have to explain to our population that the amount of the energies that you consume in your household is really high. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, if you look at the whole GDP or, or the whole energy intensity of the country, they account for 30-35% of the whole energy consumed in wow. Ukraine. Wow. Wow. Households, wow. you know, residential okay. stock. But uh -huh. this is this is really not insignificant. Mm -hmm. This is a signif significant part. This should be a part of the public campaign, which is launched by the should be launched by the government, mm -hmm. by the non-government organization. You know, there we have the association of the co-owners of the home of the homes. You know, this mm -hmm. so-called mm -hmm. OSBB. That's okay. maybe you have heard this. Uh, the, 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 that's the saying in Ukrainian, by okay. the way. Uh, really, the people should be explained this. Mm -hmm. They just don't don't know it. Not not just because they don't want. Mm -hmm. Just it used to be different in the past. Now, does Jack play uh, play any role in like educating and keeping No. Um, mm -hmm. I I can I can I can really I, I remember not a single case when Jack people from the Jack would come uh, to a house and say, "You know, guys, you here consume a lot. Maybe you need to do some uh, we need to do some renovation, etc." Mm -hmm. No. The, I think uh, you know, the, these structures are partly outdated and mm -hmm. they you know, they were not created to perform this role. Mm. That's why they are not doing this. Mm. Only a person who feels one's responsibility for their own house would care about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is only in the case when people have united their efforts uh, and they did it because they wanted so. They created OSBB, for yeah. instance. Gotcha, gotcha. They, they would care. Mm -hmm. they, would really, they would really count. Jack's unfortunately not. Do you think it would help if the government put a little more pressure on Jack to, uh, to take some uh, more, make some more proactive uh, moves in uh, educating people and this would, yeah this would be in a, some ideal world a very uh -huh. nice situation but I, th I think that there is also a very high um, level of distrust mm -hmm. to any sort of uh, state institution in Ukraine mm -hmm. if you look at other surveys people do not trust state institutions especially of the central level mm -hmm. and uh, if if I would if I imagined a person from Jack approaching me my private flat and saying you know uh, we, we see that your house is consuming lots of electricity wouldn't you consider a turning off the light when you're going out of the room for instance <laughs> yeah. I would say well this is something stupid why are these people approaching me so I think this wouldn't work because this, this tradition of distrust is too long mm. so I think uh, really people should be talking to each other because also what we saw in our survey is that people mostly trust an opinion of, of people like them. Okay. So like personal stories mm, or, mm. Or, or when they see in the media some interviews with a real person who really implemented a project of any kind, I don't okay. know, did something and he now his household consumes less. Okay. So I think this, you know, peer-to-peer -peer communication would work. Uh, communication from the non-government organization also would work. Mm -hmm. I mean, the such um, civil society organization, uh, you know, I think that the population trusts them. Mm, okay. uh, yeah, and uh, of course, also advertising from social, so-called social advertising would work. Okay. There's, I think this uh, wouldn't be uh, um, very fast. This is a lengthy process. Okay. But we need to start from some 
from someone. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, uh, also it shows that only 9% 9% of re uh, respondents believe that tariffs increase are due to objective reasons. Why do you think that is? Yeah, this is also one of the numbers which uh, really more surprised us. Uh, people think that the price or that they pay for the utilities is high, is intransparent, is not objective. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this reflects the general level of distrust to everything connected uh, to power. Mm -hmm. So they don't understand how the price that they get in the utilities, uh, the, how, how the price has been formed. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, another, um, another important factor here is that they, when they pay, they don't see any result. Mm. I mean, like I'm paying like every month for renovation, and I don't see any changes in my houses since forever. Especially if the house is governed by Jack. Okay. There are no changes. So why am I paying for this? What am I, am I getting for this? Uh -huh. When they see no changes, there are lots of such examples all over Ukraine. Of course, they would say no. The tariff is untransparent. We don't trust it. It's not objective. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Well, thank you so much. I wish we had more time to go into more, but, you know, we, uh, yeah, it's been great uh, getting your inputs. Thank you for so, having me here. Thank you so much, Maria. That was uh, Maria hovel Klanchar, project coordinator and representative of the Friedrich Ebert Foundation in Ukraine. Thank you for watching Head to Head and stay tuned for more.